What's going on guys? Uh, today I want to make this quick video discussing the Google Finance API and pretty much how you can create your own spreadsheet of different stock market and you know data that you can use to analyze different stocks. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So I selected a couple tickers here just for some example data and then I selected a couple attributes here as well um, that we can use. Um, so the price open is pretty much what the ticker was trading at on open today. Um, as of 12 16 2020 um, so you can see here real income opened up at 6178 at t opened up at 3053 amazon was 3176 tesla 628 and johnson and johnson at 150 um, so let's go ahead and pretty much go down this list here but if you click on the cell you can pretty much see that the formula requires that you you know type type in the equal sign and then google finance and then B2 is specifying this ticker symbol um, and cell right here. You know, you can manually type that in if you want. You can type in, you know, parentheses and then whatever ticker symbol you want in there. And then A3 references my attribute that I am, you know, referencing. Once again, you can manually type that in as well. Um, and what I mean by that, you can do price open and that works as well. Um, but for this, I'm pretty much made it dynamic so I can just go down this list pretty easily. Um, so let's go into the first one, to the second one here. That's not what I meant to do. Let's go here and select all these. And then the cool way that I have it structured like this, how I'm referencing that instead of manually do it, I can just go like that. And now it's going to show me the price. This pretty much is the closing price of today. So you can see here, real income went down, AT&T went down, Amazon went up. Tesla went down and Johnson and Johnson went down. And the next attribute here is going to tell me the change, um, pretty much how much specifically it went down. So let's select that here. So we can see real income went down by 40 cents, ATC went down by 30, and so on. You know, Amazon had a pretty nice day, but it looks like every, you know, all these other examples were red today. And then if we want to see that change in a percent, um, we just changed the attribute to change percent. And these are not currently showing as percentages, but let's just go ahead and change these here, change the format. Um, so you can see here it's a 0.65%, um, a little bit more than a half a percent. at t was almost down 1% today. Um, Amazon was up 2.4%. Tesla was down negative 1.65%. Johnson Johnson was down um, a sixth of a percent as well. Okay, so the next column is high 52. That's pretty much, you know, what was the highest price this stock was trading at um, in the last 52 weeks. So let's go ahead and just copy this down here for all of them. So as you can see here, let's go ahead and round this up to our currency. Yeah, so in the last 52 weeks, the highest price for real income was $84. Um, and I imagine all these numbers were before um, the huge crash in, in March. Um, obviously, with Amazon, um, it's definitely recovered completely since the March and, and some. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. It can tell you pretty much what the high and what the low is. As you can see here, there's a big range there. Not a whole lot of range there. Huge range there. Huge range. I mean, it's crazy. Within the last 52 weeks, Tesla was at $70 a share. Um, you know, that does account for... Um, Tesla did have the stock split this year, so that could play a role into that. Um, big range there as well. The next column is PE ratio. So let's just go ahead and type that in here. So I'll show you guys how to manually type one in. So you want to type in Google Finance, and then we're referencing the B2 cell, like I said, which is ticker symbol B2. I mean, you also can do something like something like that, and then your attributes. For, so this situation would be like that, and that's pretty much going to give us RP ratio. Obviously, that's off a little bit there, um, but RP ratio is around 50, um, so that's pretty high. Um, definitely do your research as far as these three numbers here 
Um, but a lot of times these are used to evaluate whether or not it's a good buying opportunity for stocks based upon you know their price to earnings um, and yeah different statistics like that um, but yeah let's go ahead and change this back to our dynamic way we created that great let's see if we can how do we want to do that I think if I do this it's gonna make it money sign yeah, so it's really not gonna just change the format here. Okay, so you can see 18T is around 19, so that's not too bad. Uh, but you know the PE ratio definitely for tech stocks and Amazon, you can see here are pretty high. So that's based upon you know they're looking at the price of the stock, and then they're comparing that to the earnings, and based upon that ratio, that kind of gives us that you know 94 ratio. Definitely, you can see Tesla could be over overvalued or overpriced at the moment that's why they have a humongous p ratio there johnson johnson that seems like a pretty reasonable um you know p ratio or it could be you know a sign for a, a good buy uh, but definitely definitely do your own research as far as determining whether or not stock is a good time to buy or a good time to sell or vice versa um, let's go ahead and copy these two more down here so the eps like i mentioned um, this is earnings per share, so this is actually like a dollar amount. Um, so Amazon's definitely earning a lot. You know they are almost over three thousand dollars a share, so that's pretty high there. And then the beta, um, pretty much, um, from my understanding, depending on how the stock market um, it correlates, it correlates with how the stock market moves. So if the entire stock market is down, this is going to affect real income, you know, 62% or, you know, not as strong, you know, compared to Amazon. So if the entire stock market is down, Amazon is going to take a bigger hit compared to real income and AT&T based upon the betas. Um, so definitely, you know, do your own research with that. There's also another one called alpha. That's pretty much the opposite of beta there from my understanding. Um, so you can see Tesla is a huge, very volatile stock. Um, if it's a red day in the market, you know, across the board, Tesla is definitely going to be taking a big hit. Typically speaking, um, I'm not sure how backdated this statistic is. Um, but yeah, this is just some high level stuff. But I think it's really cool. Um, you can pretty much, you know, put in your own holdings here, get an evaluation of, you know, where they're currently at, you know, how they're doing in the market today. Um, and yeah, so Google Finance does offer all of this for free. Like I mentioned, you just have to enter the formula. And then the first parameter there is the ticker symbol you're referencing. And then the second one is the attribute. So it would be this one here. Um, I'll leave a document. I'll leave the link to this document. Um, it goes you know, pretty much more in depth as far as the different attributes they provide. Um, there's a couple more here that I didn't list today. Um, but do keep in mind that all of these are related to stocks and ETFs. And then all of these are only related to to mutual funds. So, so if you try to use this, you know, attribute for a stock, I don't believe it's going to work. So do keep that in mind. Um, pretty cool here, though. They do include like the Morningstar rating, the expense ratio, different dividends, and different statistics for mutual funds. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool as well. Um, so yeah, I'll leave a link to this spreadsheet in the description below and the Google Docs, Google Finance um, documentation here as well. You know, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or if you need any help with anything. Um, and yeah, definitely let me know if, if you guys are using this API. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I, know, I have other holdings and other spreadsheets of all my dividend stocks and all my different holdings, all my different retirement funds and different stuff like that. And it's pretty cool, you know, I can just update that one spreadsheet and um, pretty much make my own visualization of how my portfolio is doing on the day rather than going to the brokerage itself. It kind of just gives me more, gives myself more control um, to see what data actually, you know, applies to me and what data I actually want to look at for that, you know, time. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any other questions, um, like I said, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Feel free, feel free to subscribe, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video today. Um, and then, 
And as always, um, thanks for watching, guys.